Hello, this is Humberto Ramos, artist for Marvel Comics, and you're watching Gen Mint. What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gen Mint. We're here with the new comic book day reviews for Wednesday, October 28th. Crazy week, man. We had the last Ronin one. We have the finale of the Three Joker storyline. We got a ton of great books here. Before we jump into these reviews, check out our sponsor, MillionComics.com. They have these dope mystery boxes, and they sell out super fast, so you got to jump in quick. It's a $54.99 mystery box where you're guaranteed $50 worth of comics. Shipping is included in that price. And you can save 10% by using the code GEMMINT at checkout. One of those lucky boxes is going to include this Star Wars 42 CGC 9.8, the first appearance of Boba Fett. So either way, you're going to get some great comics, get a discount, and have a chance to win this great book. So that's MillionComics.com. Also, stick around to the end of the video. I'll tell you how you could enter the current giveaway we have going on that should be ending this weekend. All right, we're going to jump into what I read digitally. And I get all the image books early in PDFs. And for whatever reason, last week, I just didn't read Scumbag by Rick Remender. And everybody's talking about this book, so I had to read it. So it's an image number one. It's got art by La Rosa. You have Denicio. And this was a great book. It might have got pick of the week last week had I read it. Incredible artwork. It really gives me like Garth Ennis, Steve Dillon vibes, but the interior artwork is incredible. It's almost like a painted look. And you have this character who is a scumbag. He's the worst piece of filth on the earth. And through a weird set of circumstances regarding syringes getting knocked on the ground, he's going to have to stop a bomb that's going to destroy the world. Excellent book. I love Rick Remender. I, I have fond memories of uh, Remender's books because when I got back into comics, that's when he had just started the uh, Agent Venom run. So uh, I always love Remender, Remender stuff, and this book was no exception. Okay, for this week's image books, we have Spawn 311 with an incredible Chadwick Boseman Black Panther cover homage. It looks great. Uh, we're kind of changing up the uh, artists on all these books. It seems like every issue has a new artist, but it's written by Todd McFarlane, and it has art by... Carlo Barberi, and I think this was a good issue, man. It really kind of explains why we're seeing all these different hell spawns coming out of nowhere. It has to do with uh, the events of Spawn 300 and 301. Basically, Spawn has pissed off Heaven and Hell so bad that they're now working together to hunt him, and he basically just made a whole mess for himself. Uh, it's a good issue. I, I feel like Spawn has been a little bit slow since issues uh, 300 and 301, uh, but this one's cool. You know, we're bringing back some fan favorite spawns like Medieval Spawn, Gunslinger Spawn, and things like that. Uh, also, a nice Cygor and uh, Overkill uh, and Freak mention, but cameo, uh, which was cool to see. It was an okay issue. Then we got Bliss number four by Sean Lewis and Caitlin Yarsky. This book is kind of going in all types of directions that I never expected it to go, but it was a very emotional issue. Like This whole thing was about this father who's on trial. He did terrible things in order to provide medicine for his sick son, but he kind of gets possessed by these creatures that he's serving, and he's tasked to kill his wife. So very emotional when he runs up on her. Some great funny stuff from like the mother-in-law and father-in-law. Uh, I don't really know where this book is going. I kind of... I guess in my mind had it going somewhere and it's kind of went completely off the rails. But I'm still interested. I still read Bliss every week. Uh, let me know what you guys have been thinking about it in the comments below. Then the last one. Man, this almost got pick of the week this week. I really wanted to give it to it. Department of Truth, issue two. James Tiny in the fourth. Uh, do we still have to keep saying the fourth? I mean, are we, we going to get him confused with the third or the second? Uh, you have Art by Simmons and then you have Bidicar. Great book, man. The premise of this book is like, what if every conspiracy theory was true? And not because they really happen, because the universe is built in such a way that if you think something, and if the more people think of something, it manifests itself and it happens. So like in today's climate, flat, the earth would be flat because so many people will have flat earth conspiracies. It's kind of one of those things. It kind of reminds me of that Simpsons Treehouse of Horror episode where all the ads come to life and the only way that you can kill them is by not paying attention to them. Same premise, but great book. Sticking with the indies, we have Heavy Issue 2. This is by Vault Comics, uh, written by Max Bemis. You have Eric Donovan, Chris Peter, and Taylor Esposito. I really, really enjoyed Issue 1. Issue 2, I didn't like it as much, but uh, it, it picked up for me. To kind of not give spoilers, basically, even when you're dead, you have to work kind of thing. This guy's in the afterlife. He's a hitman for the afterlife, and he has to basically... He gets put on missions uh, in, in, within the space-time continuum to kind of right wrongs. So anyway, he's teamed up with the guy that had his wife killed. And this guy is the polar opposite of him, where he's kind of like, 
Like he mentions in the book, he was the high school football player. Well, this guy was making out with cheerleaders behind the bleachers because he sold them weed. So that kind of thing, he, he's partnered up with this guy who is a, a psychotic narcissist, murderer, and he loves it. And <laughs> as much as uh, the main character, I haven't learned their names yet, it's issue two. Uh, as much as he hates him and tries to get him like you know off of the task force, uh, they, they love him. They think that his tactics are much needed and that he should be in there getting down and dirty and uh, crazy triple X books, sex, all kinds of crazy stuff in there. It, it's it's pretty interesting. I, I, I did like it. After, uh, after those initial first pages, I was kind of uninterested, but then it got pretty crazy. All right, guys, the last Ronin, issue one in an oversized trade paperback format, uh, $8.99 book. By, uh, the plot was by Eastman and Laird. You have Waltz, Escarosa, and Delgado on here. So I haven't been reading single issues of TMNT because I read them as the deluxe editions come out. So I'm a little behind. But during our live shows on Sundays, everybody's like, who do you think the last Ronin is? Who do you think the last Ronin is? So I guess they've been teasing him leading up to this miniseries. You know, they do tell you who the last Ronin is in this book. I'm not going to spoil it. But for somebody just jumping in, basically you have this turtle. He has a black bandana and he seems to have one of each weapon from each of the four turtles. He seems to be in a futuristic setting, flying cars. Uh, Shredder's grandson is the head of the foot. And it seems like the other turtles are like following behind him, talking to him. But then you kind of get the vibe like, is this all in his head? So is this like some kind of futuristic mutated version of all four turtles? Is it one turtle that has like the voices of his dead brothers in his head? I don't know. Throughout the book, I'm trying to figure it out. But you do find out at the end. Uh, it was a great issue, man. It had that old kind of like original mirage tmnt vibe like that frank miller vibe artwork was great kind of nice action almost like tmnt the dark tmnt returns kind of vibes because you have an older bulkier bulkier turtle and uh, a lot of um battle damage he takes and it's a great issue and shout out to my man very gary he's got a variant for this book and they actually feature his cover and it says by very gary comics in in the back of the book here right here on the Left page. Congrats to Barry Gary. Moving over to Marvel, we have Ten of Swords Stasis, which is part 11 out of 22 by Hickman, I think Howard, uh, Laraz, Asar, and Garcia. So um, we're midway through Ten of Swords. I, I didn't love this issue. The purpose of this issue was to kind of introduce us to the other side's champions, right? The first 10 chapters were our Krakoan champions getting their swords. They kind of dedicated an issue to each of that. And this one, it just kind of says, you know, here's the enemy, here's their swords, here's kind of Saturn's play, uh, and really incorporating Apocalypse with his past, bringing in the tarot cards into play here. And what is with Saturn? I, she gives me strong Emma Frost vibes, you know? I didn't hate this issue. I, I didn't dislike it like I did Excalibur, but I didn't love it as far as a Ten of Swords uh, chapter. It was okay. Got Immortal Hulk 39 by Al Ewing with uh, Bennett, Jose, Barbo, and Mounts. I love this cover, man. Kind of like Hulk versus Gladiator Hulk. Uh, trippy, horror-ific <laughs> issue, man. We're in Hulk's mindscape. We're in kind of hell or limbo where they're just calling the, the, the down under place. We're seeing how the leader uh, escapes and how he involves um, Bruce Banner's father, Brian Banner. And he really is on some horror movie type stuff face opening up sucking out souls type of stuff um it, fe it felt like a very fast issue it, not really much happened it's just a lot of mindscape stuff and um i think it, it seems like it's going to trickle into the real world with uh bruce banner he kind of gets jacked up in this but uh, otherwise, artwork is horrific like you would expect. The story was eerie and creepy, and it was fun. Amazing Spider-Man 51, Nick Spencer with uh, Gleason and Delgado. Great cover with Doctor Strange and Spider-Man. Not so much of a great issue. This issue was basically just Spider-Man dealing with uh, possessed silk, uh, as we've seen from the last issues. Nothing with Sin Eater, very little kindred, and just Spider-Man trying to get Doctor Strange to team up. I thought it was kind of whack. Uh, I didn't really find it interesting. It's a shame because I really liked the arc before this. Uh, I'm not really digging where it's at right now. Uh, the Black Cat stuff was so predictable at the end. just wasn't my thing. Hey, we got Strange Academy 4. Shout out to Humberto Ramos for dropping us that intro. This is written by Scotty Young with art by Humberto Ramos and uh, Edgar Delgado. 
This was issue four. Let me tell you something, man. Artwork on this book is incredible. Uh, I mentioned this before. I mentioned it during our live interview with Humberto that he really, you know, is able to take his time with each page. It's highly detailed. I think Scotty Young's dialogue is great. I think he's really nailed the kids. Uh, for me, it just feels like it's geared toward a younger audience. I'm not really into the story. Kind of like child antics within... Um, you know, the Marvel version of Hogwarts and playing tag that puts them in a uh, weird world and Asgard and New York City with Spider-Man and just kind of antic stuff. Uh, I feel like it's something that would be good for like my daughters, my teenagers. I have a 16 year old and a 12 year old. For me, I'm not really digging the story, but it does look good. Jumping over to DC with Detective Comics 1029, Peter J. Tomasi, Rockefeller and Brown. Yo, this was a dope issue. So we're introducing this new character. Uh, the mirror, who has kind of like this reflective mirror costume, right? Because he's leading this new resistance called, what, the Gargoyle kill Killers or Gargoyle Hunters? Basically anti-vigilante. He doesn't want to put a face to his movement, so his face is reflecting Gotham and the people, right? This takes place right after Joker War, which I'm glad to see because I hate when the secondary Bat Book is like in a different world than the main Bat Book, but Bruce Wayne moving out of Wayne Manor. He's got to move to the Brownstone in Gotham. He's got to play with a smaller piggy bank now, and uh, this picks up right where that left off. So I, I really did enjoy this. I liked kind of the gargoyle hunters or whatever they're called interfering with Batman trying to stop a, a criminal, and Batman still not really knowing what's going on. So, uh, great issue, man. Flash 764. This is by Schnicked, Conrad, and Hi-Fi. So, last issue, kind of like a filler. Uh, the, it was the issue following the long uh, Joshua Williamson run. This one, um, I think they started a new arc here. You, you're, you know, the last issue was Flash losing his ring from the trickster. This one, he's going against the guy with the ring, this time ring, space ring. He can change molecules. I don't know, it was pretty forgettable. It was kind of fun. I was digging the ending. Pretty big cliffhanger ending. But uh, otherwise, you know, I thought it was just okay. I mean, if you're on a budget and <laughs> there's one book you can't pick up, I mean, you could probably skip Flash. And Batman Beyond. Issue 48 was okay, though. This is by uh, Peter Jurgens, uh, Pelletier, Ratmund, and Soto Mayer. So this is kind of like a Booster Gold... Um, playing with time they're they're trying to stop something that's implanted in bruce's mind that really tr gets triggered somehow and then he turns against uh terry mcginnis so they go to the past to try to prevent what happened in 2020 that uh set these chains of events uh moving forward so very back to the future booster gold is being very you know flamboyant and very like i don't know slapstick uh i really dig batman beyond this issue was a little i don't know it was whatever Dark Knight Death Metal, Rise of the New God One-Shot. This was by uh, James Tinian IV, Hill, Marino, Varela, uh, Cifuentes, Ariola, and Hi-Fi. So there's a backup story, too. That's why there's so many people. But, yo, this was a dope issue. I think this would have been a good issue, even if you didn't read anything Death Metal. I think it was a great standalone issue. Sure, you have the Batman Hatton versus uh, Perpetua, but it's an awesome, epic, cosmic battle. I thought it was great. You have this character that comes back. He's kind of like, um, okay, if I'm a being of Earth within the universe, within the multiverse, this is a, uh, a character uh, from the Omniverse. So he's like a level above us. So we bring back uh, Mentor and the Mobius chair. Well, we don't bring back the Mobius chair, but, you know, that guy, Mentor. And I love the storytelling. I love the interaction. I loved him trying to figure out, you know, why is this multiverse so colorful? And, and it, it, it almost felt... Like it was a metaphor for DC Comics. Like DC Comics is ending and they're reflecting on all the great things that it brought and they're trying to save it. Tell me that you didn't get those vibes from this book. But it was great. It wasn't uh, convoluted like a lot of uh, the Dark Metal, uh, the Dark Knight's Death Metal issues have been. I thought it was a great issue, man. Artwork was great, cosmic, awesome, great storytelling. And the backup story was super forgettable. The Green Lantern Corps story. It was whack. All right, guys, and my pick of the week. You know what it is, baby. Batman 3 Jokers, the final issue, the finale. Jeff Johns delivered a great story with amazing dialogue. Jason Fabo, man, I put him up there with with uh, Jim Lee. Like, he's got his Batman, his, his art is amazing. Like, he really nailed Batman. Uh, Red Hood, Batgirl, the Jokers. You're drawing three different Jokers and he's capturing them so differently. It's just amazing. I can't really even say anything without spoiling this regarding the Jokers. Um, 
You got to read it. I, I thought it was clever. I thought that the ending, uh, kind of tying it back to Killing Joke, wa was awesome. I think it makes a lot of sense. This kind of has been a love letter to Killing Joke the whole time. I don't want to say whether or not you find out who's the real Joker, if there is a real Joker, who is the next Joker, because it's going to be spoilers. So you just got to read it for yourself. There's only three issues. It's amazing. Pick of the week for sure. Like I said, check out the details on the giveaway real quick. All right, guys, in order to be eligible for the giveaway, you have to be a subscriber to the channel. So go ahead and hit the notification bell, hit the like button on this video, and most importantly, drop a comment below. Once we hit 95,000 subscribers, I'm going to pick a random video where I promoted this giveaway and use a random YouTube comment generator to draw a winner. You could be any age, any location. We will ship this worldwide, so go ahead and comment down below to enter. And as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to take the time to check out my previous new comic book day reviews and stay minty fresh. Peace.